All right. Geometry and sound linking in with Project 432. Guys, our left brain is a, we are, have a parallel processor brain. That means our left brain functions one way and our right the other. The right is the artistic side. The left is the mathematical geometric side. When you hit with mirror neurons, that means when you hear sound, there's mirror neurons that go boom and the left side of your brain is just going maths, geometry, angles, interpreting the exact same time mirror neuron. Let's have a listen to this yeah, legend. understood that our brains and our you know, left temporal lobe and our right temporal lobe, that's exactly like right here, right on both sides of our head. And one side is the seat of music. On the other side of the brain, so the left temporal lobe, it's where we process mathematics. So there's this concept of mirror neurons, right? And how people can mirror mimic. The same thing happens within our brain. And so you could say that the visual arts would be in the occipital lobe in the back of our brain on the right side. And then what we call the material sciences would be the representation of that manifested form, art imitating life. So then we have biology and chemistry and physics over here, right in the back of our brain. Music is just the, the geometry that we experience with our ears. All right, so let's look at some geometry. We have the triangle there. Now, no matter what, how you squash that triangle, it's always gonna sum to 180 degrees. Shapes and geometry correspond to sounds. They are absolutely inextricably linked hand in hand. There is sound, there is geometry. There is no other way about it. We look at the square. These are foundational geometric shapes. Four times 90 sums to 360 degrees. And then if you squash it to diamonds, you're still going to get 360 degrees. So we're getting, we're going somewhere with this. And there is the sum of the angles. So the triangle equals 180 degrees, square 360 degrees, pentagon 540, hexagon 720, octagon 1080, decagon 1440. Let's make the music notes frequencies exactly like that. And we add in uh, just one shape there, the heptagon, which has 900 degrees. Now let's turn it to 900 hertz, turn them into hertz. On the piano, we get this sound. hear that precise tempered that is the first six partials of the overtone series guys and it came from geometry that's why when you resonate the sand on the plate or the water it goes naturally in these geometric shapes and where's 432 hertz it is right in this tuning that's why there is no mathematical justification for 440 to fit in it means you're going to make this triangle slightly wrong the square is going to be slightly wrong. It's a fraud, guys. There, it's, there's no other way about it. That's why 432 Pythagorean tuning was based off the maths and geometry. So 432, and they all sum to 9. 4 plus 3 plus 2. 6 plus 3, 9. 180, 1 plus 8, 9. They all sum to 9. They must sum to 9. Any sound you can think of will match up to the geometric shape. A circle, for example, represents a perfect octave. The 12 points of a regular dodecagon align perfectly with the 12 notes of the chromatic scale. Connecting these points with straight lines creates a dodecagram. Any line connecting two points on the circle represents an interval, the simplest form of chord. Triangles represent triads, augmented, major, minor and diminished. Tetragons or quadrilaterals like squares, diamonds, rectangles, kites, and various trapezoids represent tetrachords, major seventh, minor seventh, dominant seventh, minor seventh flat five, dominant seventh flat five, diminished seventh, and augmented seventh, some of the most commonly used chords in music. Pentagons represent pentatonic scales, major, minor, modal, and others and pentachords, with the major, minor, and dominant ninth being the most common. Hexagons represent hexatonic scales, such as the whole tone and minor half step. Heptagons represent heptatonic scales, the most commonly used scales and modes. Heptagons also represent tetrachords with upper structure triads. 
Octagons represent octatonic scales, such as diminished scales and some dense octachords. Larger polygons represent larger scales, nonatonic, decatonic, and hendecatonic. The 12 sided dodecagon is the largest polygon used in music and represents the full chromatic scale. Chords and scales are transposed by rotating shapes around their center and transformed by reflection over one or more of 12 possible axes or... All right, ladies and gentlemen, we transition to Metatron's Cube and then Project 432. This is the shape of all shapes. All the five platonic solids are in this shape. And that includes the Tetrahedron, which is the Star of David. It has six edges and four sides. Then we have the hexahedron, 12 edges, 6 faces. The octahedron, 12 edges, 8 faces. The dodecahedron, 30 edges and 12 faces. And the icosahedron, 30 edges, 20 faces. I had to change this presentation a few times because of just novel discovery, novel discovery. And then Robert goes, boom, check this out. Malchizedek's 5D Tesseract, Novel Geometric Form, revealed 2nd of June. It's on his website now. 3D model coming out. Guys, geometry shapes our reality. Right? All of our reality, our 3D reality is in Metatron's cube. So this is the grand grand thehedron elevator derived from the octahedron. It has 23,040 degrees of angles and 128 sides. Here's some of his sketch up. And he said in the private group, guys, clearly Metatron's cube possesses all potential quantum states in evolutionary geometries, including those not comprehended yet. And let's consider Mr. Carson here. And there's a great interview with Billy Carson and Robert Edward Grant. And Robert Edward Grant is just red pilling him. And Billy's just going, it's great. I'll drop it on the chat. Because if you go in all the higher dimensions, you know, we're in the third. So if you draw a line on a piece of paper, that's the first dimension. If you then connect those lines and, and uh, create a house on a piece of paper, that's a two-dimensional structure. Or you can move it into a computer. Anything you see in a computer that looks 3D is actually 2D. And because we're in the third, we can see down into 2D. We can see all the way down, obviously, into 1D. And we can manipulate those dimensions from our higher selves. The fourth dimension is something called a tesseract. If you go into the ancient text, it's Metatron's cube. Meta, M-E-T-A, metaverse, right? They got that from Metatron's cube. And this fourth dimension is really something called a quasi-crystal. And this quasi-crystal in the fourth dimension, it casts a shadow. And the shadow that it casts, it creates the realm that we're living in here. We're living in a shadow of a higher dimension. That shadow creates a third dimension. It actually creates a fractal of it, creates this fractal holographic matrix that we're actually maneuvering in in the third dimension right now my good mate calls it as above so below on heaven on earth as it is in heaven so these geometric forms cast a shadow on our reality forming our reality and there is the metatron's cube in a 3d form and look it's casting a shadow in the 2d form we see as metatron's cube